Well, good evening. <laughs> Praise God. Um, we've got Reverend Bob Carroll with us tonight, bringing the Word of God. And um, the next time he's coming, he's going to give his testimony. So I'll be going live with his testimony on his, when he can fit us in next time. <laughs> Hallelujah. So uh, I'd just like to welcome Bob now as he brings the Word. We welcome everyone who will be watching this video. Um, please share this video with as many people, many friends as you can. Why? So that others may be blessed with the Word of God. So we welcome Bob. <laughs> Some water though if you need it. <laughs> Praise God. I've sat a bit closer because I've not got the microphone with me. Okay. <laughs> so. Bless you all. Shalom. Amen. Greetings in the name of our Messiah, Jesus Christ. And uh, you've got a Bible or you want to read the word with me? I'm going to be reading from Genesis chapter 13. And from then on it will become apparent what I'm trying to put across. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. And it starts off verse 1. Then Abraham went up from Egypt, he and his wife, all that he had, and Lot with him to the south. Abraham was very rich in livestock, in silver and in gold. And he went on his journey from the south as far as Bethel, to a place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Er, to the place of the altar which he had made there at first. And there Abraham called on the name of the Lord. And Lot also, who went with Abraham, had flocks and herds and tents. Now the land was not able to support them, that they might dwell there together, for their possessions were so great that they could not dwell together. And there was strife between the herdsmen of Abraham's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. And the Canaanites and the Passerites who dwelt in the land. So Abraham went, uh, uh, said to Lot, Please let there be no strife between you and me, and between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we are brethren. Is not the whole land before you? Please separate from me. If you take the left, then I will go to the right, or if you go to the right, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and saw all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere, before the Lord had destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, like the garden of the Lord, and the land of Egypt as you go towards Zor. Then Lot chose for himself all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed the east, and they separated from each other. Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan and Lot dwelt in the cities on the plain and pitched his tent even as far as Sodom. But the men of Sodom were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord. And the Lord said to Abraham, after Lot had separated from him, Lift up your eyes now and look to the place where you are, northwards, southwards, eastwards and westwards, for all the land which you I give uh, to you and your descendants forever. And I will make you uh, your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. Arise, walk in the land through its length and its breadth, I give it to you. Then Hebron moved his tent and went and dwelt by the Tembereth trees, of Manra, which are in the which are in Hebron, and built an altar there to the Lord. Father God, we come to you now, Lord, and we just ask that you bring your anointing on this word. Mm. We pray, Lord, that it perhaps give somebody a revelation or a challenge, Lord, or it reawaken them in your plans and purposes in their lives. So, Father God, as we deliver this now, Lord. We just uh, do it in your name, Lord, because you say we're two or three gathered, you're in the midst. Yes. And I believe you're in the midst here, Father. 
So we just carry on with this word that you've given into my heart to deliver. I pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. 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 You know, it's sometimes, I, I quite often use my, my glasses, and, but sometimes it's better, I can see better without. <laughs> uh, this evening, I want to take a look uh, with you at some of the predicaments and situations in which God's servants can find themselves. And in this case, we're looking at Abraham, and in particular, Lot. Mm. And perhaps there may be lessons here for us to learn, as I find so often when I go into the scriptures. <coughs> you see, if we're not living in the centre of God's will for our lives, or where God wants us to be, we can bring on grief big time. And this can be so true in a salvation sense. If you're not saved, you can have a great problem, particularly <coughs> where you're going to spend eternity. Mm. No doubt about that. So I, just a quick overview before I look at some key points. And excuse me please, I just want to... Mm. Never thought it. At some key points. First of all, Lot lived in Sodom, <coughs> which showed that, the, uh, that where you live could have a dramatic effect on your spiritual condition. In a sense, Lot was uh, without excuse because he chose to live there. And quite simply put, he made the wrong choice because he chose Sodom. And let's uh, see where he went wrong. You see, because his choice of Sodom was a complex thing. It was a result of a number of smaller choices. Uh, and as we go deeper into the word, you'll notice that the problem with Lot was a basic character flaw. <coughs> His choices were based on what he perceived was best for him. He chose the smooth rather than the rough. And we shall see that sometimes that's not always the best decision to make. And I know when I'm making decisions in my home life, my domestic scene, I, sometimes I make decisions which is best for me or my family. And sometimes, really, I should listen to Father mm. for who he wants us to be. Mm. Now, as I said, I'm going to look at three key points. The first one is this. <coughs> Lot chose a city instead of a country. Genesis 13.9, it says, Is not the whole land before you? Please separate from me. And if you take the left, then I will go to the right. Or if you go to the right, then I will go to the left. That's Abraham speaking to Lot, you see. The herdsmen of Abraham and Lot had, had this disagreement. And that's why Abraham suggested they split up. Because th there's just too many of them together. Genesis 13, 12. Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan. Lot dwelt in the cities on the, of the plain and pitched his tent towards Sodom. That's what the scripture says. And Lot, Lot was not forced to live in Sodom. In fact, he only camped towards Sodom in the beginning. But it wasn't long before he had a house in Sodom itself. And by the time the angels arrived to destroy Sodom, Lot was well settled there. Look at Abraham. God called Abraham out of the city to become a pioneer. And Lot had the same choice as being part of that calling. But you see, Lot's calling and possibilities were limited by the city. And when we look out when he looked out from his house, he saw the skyline. On the other hand, when Abraham looked out, he saw the tent. He saw the whole land. And look at what God did for Abraham. When he was separated from Lot, the Lord told him to go out across the country 
and he promised it all to Abram from a, a, a rising to a rising. And don't forget that was to be an everlasting possession. Mm -hmm. And when you come <coughs> to talking about the land in the Middle East at the moment, which is the big argument, which is at the centre of everything that's going on, mm -hmm. it's the land. But would they forget that God gave it to them as an everlasting possession? Mm -hmm. And there are times, you see, he tells us in Deuteronomy there, I think it's around 16, where he says, uh, look, God says to the people, you behave yourself, do what I tell you to do, yeah. and I'll bless you. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, I'll punish you, I'll, I'll send you out to the land. Mm -hmm. And he did that on a number of occasions. Lesson here for us, be doing what the Lord wants us to do. It's so easy to sort of think, oh, I'll go and do my own way. It'll be easy that way and not have any problems or awkwardness. But in the end, God knows. And I've been in these positions too myself where I've gone my own way and I've suffered. But when I've gone to ways that the Lord has shown me to do, I've had blessings, Amen. mighty blessings. Of a supernatural God who can, nothing is impossible with him. And quite often we can't understand why he would give us a task to do or a place to go or what we were to settle up and, uh, you know, settle down rather and live and work for him. But he knows what he wants. I think, as I said last time, God owns us. We give our life to him. Yeah. And in return, we've got everlasting salvation. You see, many people are not truly content where they are. And uh, yet they still refuse to move on from where they are to where they should be. And it's true in the, the, you know, the life of a, uh, that you live with Jesus Christ. He knows best. And the second point here, besides, uh, you know, choosing a city instead of a country. He chose ease instead of hardship. Didn't Jesus say, take up your cross and follow me? Amen. You know, how many of us miss that out? We come and say, Lord, we want this, do this, it's easy, you know. But hey, what do we do for him? You know, it's a two-way agreement. And sometimes following him is not easy. Although we know we're going to get the blessings and we've got everything for us, the rewards, it's not easy at times when people are sort of uh, getting at you, pulling you to pieces, you know. Uh, and I, when I read across the press at the moment, the spirit of the Antichrist is gathering momentum. I see more Christians being persecuted unto death in, across the world, particularly in the Middle East and the Far East. And it's gathering momentum. It's going to be there. I'm thankful personally. I uh, believe in a pre trib rapture. I believe the next thing for the church is the rapture. Amen. Tons of prophecies for Israel. Tons of prophecies for the world and nations. Because the nations are going to come into judgment. Mm -hmm. For what they've done. You know, I don't know how I Sodom would have been on the list of the most livable places, but it must have been a desirable place at the time to live in. Listen, it offered protection and position. It had a king, a city wall and a gate. And I'm sure it had, Lot had become an important man in it for the time of Sodom. In fact, he sat at the gate of Sodom, you know, in Bible days, and it was only the important men who were allowed to sit at the gates. Sodom offered amenities. It had a well in the town square. There was a grocery store in Sodom, if you know. You know, Sodom offered company. Often we don't like to be alone. It's the way of most of us are. But Sodom offered company, albeit the wrong kind of company. The men of Sodom were wicked. And they did not hide their wickedness. They flaunted it. 
And that's what's coming on today when we turn, talk about certain parts of society that are in this way of life. They not only sort of just get on with it, they flaunt it everywhere. They're having laws changed in the nation. I uh, hear today or read earlier on today there's a fight back in America because all the, everybody that loves being straight had a big parade <laughs> through one of the cities <laughs> and uh, they said they were fighting back, <laughs> you know. Praise so uh, praise Amen. God for that. Amen. And besides, I mean, it is Sodom offered company. Oh, I've, I've just read that part, forgive me. Uh, they, they flaunted it. Uh, Isaiah 3 9 says, The Luke on the countenance witnessed against them, and they declared their sin as Sodom. They did not hide it. Woe to the soul, for they had brought evil unto themselves. Mm. That's what the scripture says. Lot availed himself of all Sodom had to offer. Abraham, on the other hand, said he would not take uh, even a shoelace from Sodom. Genesis 14, 22 to 23. But Hebron said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted up my hand to the Lord God, most high, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will take nothing from a thread to a sandal strap, and that I will not take anything that is yours, lest you say, I have made Abraham. You see? But in the end, Sodom did offer absolutely nothing to law, neither protection, nor position, nor substance, nor friends. And if you read through to Genesis 19, 24, it says, Then the Lord rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord of heaven. And I don't know whether you're aware of this, but Sodom and Gomorrah have actually been found from uh, the archaeology. <coughs> And there's only brimstone there now they can find it's been tested. And I thought, wow, you know, another sign of prophecy being fulfilled. Amen. Prophecy and the, the, the scriptures being right. And I'm just coming to the last part now where uh, having chose the city and then he, he, he chose Sodom, uh, Lot chose the carnal rather than the spiritual. Mm. You see, you get so many people coming to churches nowadays that they just want to be in the carnal, go to church on a Sunday morning uh, and leave it the rest of the week. They don't bother about the spirituality of being in church, being in fellowship with believers, being in fellowship with the living God. Changes everything. Genesis 13, 10 to 11. And Lot lifted his eyes and saw all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as you go towards uh, Zohar. Then Lot chose for himself all the plain of Jordan. And Lot journeyed east and separated from each other. That is, separated from Abraham. But you see, Lot had been down to Egypt to see what was been going on in uh, Genesis 13.1. Then Abraham went up from Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and Lot was with him to the south. You see, and he made his choice based on what he had seen in Egypt. Listen to Genesis 13.10. And Lot lifted up his eyes and he saw all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere, like the land of Egypt. You see, people of faith do not make choices based on temporal or worldly considerations. They make their decisions based on faith in God and in obedience to scriptural principles. And if you're walking in Christ, if you're walking daily in the Spirit as we should be, regular in the Scriptures, we will do that. Because the nearer you are to God, the nearer you are to, to living with Him, uh, abiding with Him, I think it says in Matthew 7 and in John's Gospel, you become to know Him more. 
if you're at home with your parents when you're growing up, right, you become to know what your parents want and what your parents don't want. Sadness is in so many cases, people walk away from the family and the parents mm. and what's best for them. So one of those things, the best place to be is in Jesus Christ. Amen. Absolutely. This man, Lot, chose unwisely. Lot's choice was based on temporal considerations rather than spiritual ones. Mm. Geography and economics. The plain was pleasant, it was well watered, and he would be well off. A little reminder, when God calls us all, we can't take these things with us. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Can we? That's right. They're all left behind. But considering living in Sodom, I believe he made the wrong choice. He, I believe he became grieved from the day he was there. Made a bad decision. And that's something that we've got to be switched on to, as I said, in our own lives. We're walking the Lord, we walk around with this world now that's a 24-7 supermarket or anywhere. We get sucked in the world. We can come in quite easy. Into, you know, you could just slide into it. It's like saying in the, in the Garden of Eden there, when he whispered to Mrs. Eve, who told you eating that apple would be bad? That's right. And <laughs> you have those friends when you have a decision to make, and they're probably not saying, and you say, well, I can't, it says it's going to be nice. But where does it say that, you know? Mm -hmm. And he's saying it in such a loving way, such a tender way, you know, that you fall for it at times. Mm -hmm. Oh, why not? It'll be all right. Mm -hmm. Not all right unless it's in accordance with the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It really isn't. And there's a sad end to the story. Lot, the city dweller, went to live in a cave when Sodom was destroyed. He'd lost his wife and almost lost his two sisters. Remember when his wife, Lot's wife, turned around and she looked? Mm. What did she become? She became a salt seller. Mm. <laughs> did she? You know, that's what happened to her. Amen. Genesis 19, 30. Then Lot went up out of of Zohar and dwelt in the mountains and his two daughters were with him for he was afraid to dwell in Zohar and he and his two daughters dwelt in a cave. He'd been given divine permission to live in Zohar but he was afraid to do so and the man who had the choice to live anywhere all the pleasant places he ended up living in a cave mm. on a mountainside. Mm. And in the end, Lot didn't have a lot. <laughs> Did he? No. <laughs> no, he'd lost it all. He was a righteous man who had made the wrong decision. And the lesson here is that we should be great, take great care over all the decisions we make. For even righteous servants of the Lord mm. can make a wrong decision. Mm. Mm. They can say, decide to go somewhere where it's easier rather than go to a church on Sunday and fellowship. <coughs> which is one of the main things to do. Mm. They can go anywhere rather than mix with other Christians. You know, I think there's a scripture there in uh, Timothy where it says, don't even invite somebody that doesn't believe into your household. That's right. And that's a tough one when you've got that's relatives right. and friends. Amen. It really is. Amen. Come away from them, we're commanded to do. And I want to end with saying this. Today, for those that might not know the Lord Jesus Christ as the Lord and Saviour, mm. you've got a choice. Mm. You can choose to accept what Christ did on the cross at Calvary. 
You can choose that he gave his life for you to pay the penalty for your sin. You can choose whether to put him into your heart or not. The rewards are eternal life and everything that goes with it. The other way is eternity in a fire. Simple as that. Oh brethren, give thought to the choice that you might be making tonight, wherever you may be. And make the right choice because you never know for one minute when Christ will either return to take his bride to heaven. Or you never know when he might want you personally to take you up. I did a case of mine, a friend of mine, one Christmas, his wife was in good health and everything, and they just sat there talking, and suddenly, wow, she left the side, she got dead. Thankfully, she was one, a keen believer in Jesus Christ, Praise and we know God. where she's gone. God. Don't hang on, don't grip to things of this life, just accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour. Mm. And I'll end up just saying this from a blessing from 1 Corinthians 16, 23 to 24. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. May the love uh, you have in all be from Christ. Accept it unto yourself. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord and Saviour. Amen. 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 And be blessed. Amen. And anointed. Amen. Come to Christ and live forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Bob. Praise God. What do you call it? Short Amen. and sweet. Amen. Well, thank you, Bob. What a great message. A great word tonight. Let's make sure we're making the right choices. In our daily walk with God. A great message that tonight. Um, you know, there were more watching tonight than in here. There were ten, I saw ten watching live tonight. And Gareth had five watching live. So there were 15. There were more watching tonight out there than in here. Isn't it wonderful that? Um, and uh, we're just a small word for those who are going to be watching this in a few days' time as it goes live again. Um, please share this video because it's the Word of God. You're sharing the Word of God. Every time you share it, you're sharing the Word of God. See, God has called us to be generous Christians. So we need to share the Word generously. So thanks for watching tonight. Um, Bob's coming again soon to give his testimony. His full testimony will be coming soon here. So we welcome you to that. God bless you. Thank you. Where's God? Hallelujah. Fifteen? Fourteen?